Welcome to this explanation of your first task for the preliminary PDHPE course. Your first task is an outdoor recreation plan. Uh, it is weighted at 25% uh, and it includes some aspects of outdoor recreation and first aid. Your task is to create an outdoor recreation plan that includes a risk assessment first aid management plan and leadership styles. So in part one of your assessment, you're going to need to complete a detailed risk assessment using the scaffold attached. Now the scaffold is not actually attached to your physical uh, paper version of the task. We will share this with you on Edmodo, but this is what it looks like. It's just a basic table that includes a column for risk, column for the likelihood or severity of that risk, the measures that you'll put in place to control the risk, and the first aid issues and management in relation to that risk. So you're asked to complete a detailed risk assessment using the scaffold and include a range of risk situations that may occur at camp and then clarify the first aid management plan that may be used to control the situation. Now, in your syllabus, there's a section in your outdoor recreation uh, section that asks you to learn about wilderness first aid. And as part of wilderness first aid, you'll learn a little bit about uh, thermoregulation, which just means control of the body's temperature. So conditions such as hypo and hyperthermia are the conditions that will come into play there. And there's also a reference to snake bites. So they're the two first aid situations or, or um, risks that you would consider for, for outdoor recreation, but there are many others that you could select. Uh, just a quick list of risks that you could come in contact with in a camp situation could be slips and falls. So we're doing a bushwalk on our camp, which involves a lot of different terrains. So you may slip or fall. And so you need to understand what would be the issues in relation to that. So a person may fall and fracture their, their wrist. They may fall and graze their leg. They may fall and hit their head and as a result have a head injury. So there's a number of things that could happen from slips and falls. So from that, you've got to determine what the likelihood and severity of that risk would be. And I'll just bring you back to the risk assessment scaffold. The likelihood and severity of risks and falls, uh, slips and falls. Um, the risk control. So we're looking for strategies like wearing appropriate footwear, um, ensuring that you walk in particular formations that will encourage safety. So when you're in single file and you're walking through uh, difficult terrain, that people may need to provide assistance to one another whilst on the walk. Um, and there are various other risk control strategies that you could implement. But in the first aid issues and management column, that's where you identify fractures, lacerations or cuts, abrasions, head injuries, they're the first aid issues, and then how would you manage those issues should you come across them? So if someone has a laceration or a cut from falling onto the ground, then obviously you would need to stop the bleeding first. You would need to treat the wound with... clean the wound first with saline solution, apply antiseptic, and then dress the wound so that it's covered. Um, if you had a fracture, you would need to isolate the fracture. You would need to use a sling or a splint to immobilise the fracture. Um, and if it's a really serious fracture, obviously a, a compound fracture, you would have to obviously stop the bleeding and potentially, depending on the severity, call triple zero and so on. So there's a, a number of risks that you could consider, a number of first aid issues in relation to those risks. Don't forget when you're looking at the likelihood and severity of your risk, you need to consider that you need to determine how likely it would be to occur. So for someone to slip on our hike is probably highly likely at some point. However, 
the severity of those um, situations may not always be so severe. So you may have a lot of minor falls, um, and in most cases the falls that would, that a student would experience on camp would likely be quite minor in the sense that they're not life-threatening. So, But, however, there are some times where we are walking down quite challenging uh, valleys and up quite steep uh, inclines where you could fall, and if you did fall, it could be a very serious injury. So the likelihood potentially for a slip and fall might be um, it might be uh, medium um, or high, maybe maybe more high, and then the severity would definitely be probably medium because um, there's definitely going to be a lot of falls that are going to be of low severity, but there could be a, a high severity fall, um, but it's just obviously not as likely. So moving back to the task... Um, I think that explains pretty well the first part. You've got to fill in the table. You've got to provide some depth about a first aid management plan and all of the strategies that could control the risk, okay? Leadership styles. So this is the part here where you assess the various leadership styles. Now, if we go and bring up the syllabus, I'll just quickly show you where our leadership styles are part is because many of you may not have seen this just yet but it's important that you start looking a little bit forward in your syllabus and finding some information about I've gone a bit too far about not fitness choices outdoor recreation so moving on to leadership styles which is a little bit further down so you can see it's in this section here. What impact does group dynamics have on the outdoor experience? So we're looking at leadership styles, democratic, laissez-faire, autocratic, and strategic non-intervention. So the goal for each student should be to do some, some reading, have a look at the different styles in your textbook. Democratic, quite simply, is a leadership style that involves consultation with group members, it ensures that people have some input and that their input is taken into consideration and is best used for groups that are fairly experienced and, and are able to offer pretty, uh, pretty detailed information. The laissez-faire leadership style is a style that is very relaxed or laid back uh, and where the leader will let the group take control this is not usually a very good strategy to use, particularly with younger students or inexperienced students, because they definitely need a lot of guidance. But it could be useful when the group is very experienced and doesn't require um, all that much guidance. So it can be beneficial in some cases. Normally for school camps, though, um, the laissez-faire style is one to avoid. The autocratic style is the style where the leader is definitely in charge, makes all of the decisions and doesn't usually consult with the group. This leadership style is a style that can be used effectively with young, very inexperienced students and certain activities will require an autocratic style. Where, for, for example, when there's a lot of danger involved. So an activity such as abseiling, may require a very regimented autocratic leader that has clear instructions, particularly if the leader is very experienced in abseiling and the participants are not very experienced. Then we've got strategic non-intervention, and this is, a, this is a leadership style that involves allowing the group to problem-solve and learn from the experiences around them. So the strategic non-intervention is where the leader deliberately takes a back seat and allows a group to experiment and adopt problem-solving strategies to, to learn and to develop cognitively. So this can be very beneficial when you're doing team building activities and the leader wants the, the participants to experiment, try new things, get to know each other and, and come up with a strategy together as a group through collaboration. So that could be beneficial in some camp environments. Now, your question that you need to refer to is assess the significance of leadership styles with reference to two outdoor 
activities on camp. So you need to select two activities that we do on camp. Now on camp, we'll be doing orienteering, abseiling, hiking, and we'll do an initiative activity called team rescue. So you need to choose two of those activities and then assess the significance of leadership styles for those two activities. Important to note this key term here, assess. Assess means make a judgment. Okay, so you need to be making a judgment of value, outcome, quality, result, or size. And you're using language that tells us that you're making a judgment. So a judgment might mean actually stating that a democratic leadership style is important when you are completing an activity such as bushwalking. Bushwalking is a fairly low-risk activity in most cases, um, and it's an activity where there may be various decisions that need to be made through using maps and compasses, and you may need to take on board the opinions uh, and ideas of those amongst the group. So you can see there I've made a judgment. I've said democratic leadership style is important for hiking or bushwalking, and I've backed it up with some evidence. It's important because there may be a very, very number of decisions that need to be made regarding um, the direction with which to take um, whether to, you know, when you're using a compass, you need to consult maps, you need to consult other people's ideas and opinions about that. There are many other examples you could use there, but it's really important that you choose two outdoor education activities from our camp and you make judgments about the significance of the leadership styles on those activities. Now, you've got 600 words, so use your word count to please... Um, to get that right, try not to go over. We, obviously, we're going to be quite strict with word count, so you need to get to 600 uh, and leave it at that. The best way to do it would be to set it out in two parts. So you've got uh, a, sh a short introduction, a paragraph or section on one act outdoor activity and the leadership styles involved, and then another paragraph or section on the next outdoor activity and the leadership styles involved. Now, section three is the technical and interpersonal skills that are related to the camp itself. So you need to participate and demonstrate technical and interpersonal skills necessary on camp. So when we do hiking, when we do abseiling, when we do activities such as orienteering and we do team rescue, we need to see that you are demonstrating uh, the technical skills required. So if you're asked to wear a helmet and you're asked to um, assist by holding onto a rope or to set up something during abseiling or you're asked to collaborate with your team during the team rescue activity, that's what we're looking for. We're looking for you to demonstrate these skills in the activities on camp. So you'll be assessed on camp by myself, Miss Herrera and the instructors that are there. So please put in some effort there. If you do have injuries and you can't participate for whatever reason on the camp in some activities, then you really just need to make yourself useful as best you can in those activities. So it might be assisting or helping. Um, it might be assisting the instructors or the teachers or taking photos or something like that. We need to see you involved and doing something. Important, your key terms down here, I've already explained assess. For section one, you're asked to clarify the first aid management plan. So we want it clear. We want you to make it clear and plain what first aid plan is required for dealing with fractures or for dealing with hypothermia or hyperthermia. Use your textbook. There's plenty of information in there. And for number three, demonstrate. You're asked to demonstrate those skills. Down here are your outcomes. Okay, these outcomes should match your assessment guide. So please check that. The assessment rubric, okay, an important thing here is that you're asked to demonstrate knowledge and understanding of the major areas, leadership and first aid and risk assessment. Apply skills of critical thinking and analysis, so we're looking for that deep judgment and drawing out of implications throughout your response. Your responses are illustrated with examples and they're logical. Your assessment rules are as per your assessment sheets, please read those carefully. Please fill in the task evaluation at the end of the task and your marking guidelines are very important as well. You can see if you want to get into the A range, you are going to have to show uh, 
quite a lot of detail. It's marked out of 25. So you're going to have to show us analysis. Okay, so make connections between outdoor environments, first aid, and this is the outcome. This is the effective plan that we need. Okay, to manage it, these are the strategies required. So make those connections and be very logical in the way that you do it. Making judgments and assessing those leadership styles with reference to two. Demonstrates an extensive range of technical and personal skills. That's the practical component of camp. Apply skills of critical thinking and analysis. If you want to get in that A range, you really have to show us the critical thinking and analysis. And also present ideas logically, succinctly, and use a range of relevant examples. As I said, it's marked out of 25. It's due on March 13. Okay, it will be due as a hand-in task. So you will need to make sure that you print it out um, and be ready to hand it in before homeroom on March 13. If you have any questions about this task, please feel free to see your teacher. All right, or you can contact us on Edmodo with further questions. Thank you very much for listening.